Hey guys, I'm currently in Berlin. I'm doing some touch-ups and I'm gonna give you an insight. The good, the bad and the ugly. And the good is that I have really, really improved my health and my sleep. I'm very excited about it because it's been a while. And you know what? You saw in my last vlog that I went to the library of Karl Lagerfeld. And seeing all these books really inspired me because, you know, I love collecting books. So I love buying a lot of different random books, but then I always feel a bit bad because I don't necessarily read them all because I like to feel a connection to a book out of a lot of books. And many times I pick a book at the right time or maybe the book picked me. You know what I mean? Like it's a bit serendipitous. Now that I've seen his library and I was like, wow, I need this. Like, this is one of my life goals. I realized it's okay to collect books. It's totally okay. And I need to collect a lot of books if I wanna get on his level. So what I did is I went to a bookstore that I've never been before just to get some new inspiration. And I bought some like random biographies because when I was browsing in his library and I was picking random diaries, I was like, wow, it's actually really interesting to read thoughts of people you don't even know because when you know people you kind of know what to expect and before I visited his library I would only read like famous biographies so I picked a biography by Emma Elster who I didn't know and then also what I did is that I got a book about nutrition and I haven't like, read a book about nutrition in like I think it's been years but I realized it's really good for me to update my knowledge, learn a little bit, because I am a very intuitive eater, but I feel like especially in times when I'm not super clear and I cannot listen so well to myself because I'm sick or I'm super stressed and like my judgment is a bit cloudy and then I don't make good food decisions and I feel really bad. I mean, duh, but now I've really tried to pay more attention to my nutrition and pay attention to eat more whole foods, like eat less processed foods. And I feel like it made such a difference. Like my sleep has been insane. I've had my aura in the 90s. Like what? That's incredible. Also, I feel like my hair looks so healthy. Anyway, I have a lot to tell you guys. So stay tuned. I'm gonna shoot something. I'm gonna show you. This is the... This is me. This is Jürgen. This is the tire jacket that I use for the shoot. Oh, it's so stunning. Stunning! Wow! And the bag. Oh, Jürgen, you can read my mind. This is the Loewe bag I'm shooting. And the cool thing is the colors, they're a perfect match. They're soulmates. They're made for each other, okay? So I'm gonna shoot this. And I'm gonna tell you more because, again, we have a lot to catch up on. Only been a week, but we have a lot to catch up on. Okay guys, we just sat down at a random spot. It looks like Da Prada Bar, but it says Da Piada Bar. Which probably means something with foot, no? Piada... I don't know. No, I think it's an actual restaurant. <laughs> yeah, but the name, I mean, it has a meaning. Probably, oh, maybe, no? but it's closed. So this is, of course, very convenient for our little sessions. Oh God, somebody's there. <laughs> is she looking? No, no, she's on the phone. Um, okay, let's just pretend we act normal. Yeah, and we just wait for the opening. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I was reflecting a lot because I wasn't very satisfied with my last vlog, if I'm being very honest. And that's also why it took us so long to upload it because usually we only need one round of revision. But this time it took me three rounds because I was so dissatisfied. And I think the reason is that when I'm sick, I'm not in like my best state like i'm not my most optimistic i think i talked about this in another vlog but anyway i feel like i'm foggy like my judgment is not as good and something that i noticed is that i become very negative when i'm sick and while i was vlogging i think i was already better but i still had that mindset i was not super positive and i was quite shocked because if i would describe myself i would say i'm like a very positive person would you I agree think it's the, yeah of course <laughs> but i think it's the accumulation of Things. A lot of things. Like it's a stressful month and then getting sick 
is obviously not. And there's a lot of other shit that we deal with. And I think like it all came together, but then watching myself, and this is why I always recommend everybody to like film yourself and keep like a video diary, even if you don't publish it. It's really so interesting to see because I was complaining so much. I would complain about a fork, no, a knife. I would complain about the food. <laughs> I would complain about so many things and I didn't realize, like in that moment, I didn't realize that I was complaining. And I feel like sometimes you get into the this, like behavior and you don't realize it but then that's why it's very important to be mindful and snap out of it so now Jürgen and I do you want to tell them what we <laughs> started doing? We have doing? like a <laughs> complaining jar <basically. laughs> so whenever someone's complaining or not someone like basically it's just the two of us that are part of this jar then we, we have to, to pay, pay in exactly like so so we collect in that jar everyone also Every just time someone's complaining. yeah and just to become more aware because i really i think everything in life is a matter of attitude and i don't like when this is my attitude and actually i talked about this with my therapist because i was like hey i watched my vlog and i thought i was being really negative and i was very dissatisfied guys i was so dissatisfied that i couldn't sleep like i was just thinking about this all the time thank god i had therapy the next day because that was the topic i was like i'm really really shocked that i am like that and then my therapist asked but but are you always like that like when was the last time you noticed that and I realized that this was definitely more an exception I mean obviously there's always like ups and downs but this is not my usual state and mood and I also think being negative like you only harm yourself like if you don't appreciate good things if you don't look optimistically at things and again there needs to be a balance because I don't believe in like saying that everything is always good and I also believe in like sometimes giving in into our imperfections and like bad moods etc but I think the overall and like general state needs to be optimistic and it needs to be positive because otherwise you're only harming yourself so that's something I've been working on and I feel like when we complain it's almost like a German thing and then I realized also you know I was thinking about the um, conversation with Brenda and listen I on purpose wanted to talk about something that provides entertainment value because I know that you as the viewer you want to get the tea and you want to get something that's interesting yeah but when I watched it I was like wow this is so like to me it felt condescending condescending Conde condescending I think that you're putting an end too much oh condescending I think so okay <laughs> I... Was that condescending of <laughs> No, that was patronizing. <laughs> um men's planning condescending. <laughs> I think so actually. I might be wrong, no. The more often I say it, <laughs> I get no, really I think nervous you're right. about it. Okay. You're right. But you know, I was reflecting a lot and I was wondering like why am I so bothered if other people don't behave the right way? And I also think it's a German thing. I think it's not me feeling superior because I truly do not feel superior. Like I never feel like I am better than others, but I feel like I want to to do the right thing so hard that sometimes I get into the state where I, I I don't know I'm like judging others for their behavior but I was reflecting on that and about like where I grew up and uh, like the little village where I came from where I have to generally say I had a really 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 amazing childhood but also I'm an immigrant so there's always this feeling of otherness different. and yeah I'm, I'm, I'm different and I always tried very very hard to belong and to adopt and to fit in like I tried so hard to fit in and I feel like the village where I grew up is like very German in a way where people really love doing things by the book do it right and like every time you do something that's not like in alignment with what how people expect you to behave it was very bad and I feel like I took that on where I just try to do things right I'm sometimes really literal and sometimes I think things need to go by the rules but at the same time, I have this other side in me, which is very Aquarius. And I'm like, I try to be different and I want to be different and I want to be unique. So there's this always like the tug and war between doing things very right and correct, but also taking risks and stepping out of comfort zone. It's not just comfort, Safety. it's it's conformity. Conformity. <laughs> 
conformity. You know, like doing things like everybody's doing them, doing things the right way. So I think that this is the reason why sometimes I get into my very like German and judgy self. And I actually had a lot of talks about this with others because I'm like, guys, how do you feel about this? People usually say that they know how I mean it, you know? So I think if you know me, you know how I mean it. But if you don't know me, it might, I don't know. But also, you know, my whole goal is to be very me and to be okay with, because that's the risk I have to take, right? Like the risk that I'm taking by putting myself out there is that people misunderstand what I'm trying to say or they simply don't like what I have to say or they disagree and that's totally fine. That's something I'm learning to accept because otherwise I would only be in my lane of safety and that would be really boring. Like there would be no character, no flaws. And I also think that's very boring. And I think throughout like my vlogs, you really see how I always have this dance, the tug and war between two opposing ends. Anyway, oh, thanks for the talk. Oof, we talked for so long. Oh, I like it. I like it, Picasso. Well done. <gasps> this is so cute. Hi. Oh, wow. <gasps> wow. Guys, this was awesome. Honestly, Every time I go running, I'm like, it changes my life. And you know, I noticed that when I'm not at my best, then my ADHD is really bad. And I think once you learn about being neurodivergent, which I am not just with ADHD, but I also have synesthesia. This means that I see numbers, but also letters and colors. But I feel like my ADHD gets really bad and it shows by, again, my sense of judgment is not very good. I don't think very clearly. I cannot focus. I can't get anything done. I have decided to not take medicine yet. <laughs> I love her roostering, I think. I wanna do everything to like find a natural remedy. And again, if I have my life under control, my ADHD is really not as bad. And running, I think is the biggest, or just working out is the biggest game changer. I just really, really, really love how I feel right now. Like this morning I was walking through Berlin and I was like, I really, really feel good. Like I love feeling good. I just love it. I love it so much. I love feeling clear, focused, optimistic. I love it. I love it. And I just started running yesterday, but also, wait, is it just yesterday? That's wild. But you, you're gonna see, I'm gonna pull through because I'm being for real. I wanna show you this app that I got. So it's Adams, it's by James Clear who wrote Atomic Habits. It's not sponsored, I wish it was, okay? <laughs> but it's like the one habit app that I've been using that actually works. Look, so one of my habits is delete 1000 photos on my phone because my phone is full of, <laughs> I had 93,000, now I have 90,000, okay? And every day I delete 1000 images, which is super easy for now. I think I want to go down to like, I don't know, 50k would be the dream. And then I have meditate or do breath work for five minutes. Because when I don't have time, I do one minute or a few minutes. So I want to do at least five minutes. And I also want to do more breath work because I feel like one of the reasons why I sleep really well is because I'm doing breath work right before I go to sleep. And then one is move 20 minutes or walk 10k steps and I can look, look what's gonna happen. So satisfying! I love it. Okay, now I'm gonna get ready. So Jürgen and I will work on a few things and we need to put together a founders team. So now we're meeting a potential, like somebody to join our team, which is very exciting. It's time to pack for New York. I'm gonna show you. Oh, surprise, surprise. Already. The first thing I pack is my attire trench. Big surprise. I've been wearing this trench so much 
And I think I'm gonna split these because there's always the risk of losing a luggage. And in case that happens, I just wanna lose half of my trenches. So I will put this one over there. And then I think I will put this over there. This, oh, this is actually Jürgen's. I have this one, a classic black coat. Nice. Ooh. You know why I'm so excited to go back to New York? I did miss my therapy today because there was daylight savings. And New York is only five hours behind Europe, which is a big deal, especially because it's gonna stay like this until the end of the month. So I'm in heaven. I am in time difference heaven, okay? small but mighty problem. Problem was mentioned at the beginning of the video because sometimes my enthusiasm gets the best of me. So these are my jer- oh sorry sorry guys. Okay so these are just my journals okay. Gratitude journal diary and then I told you I went book shopping. Of course I did not consider the problems I will encounter when I pack to go to New York City. Ah, silly, silly Xenia. Well, well, well. I might as well use this opportunity to do a little book haul. So one book that I got is The Coming Wave. And also the thing is that worst case, I can leave some things with friends here in Berlin and then I have good books to read. That's pretty good, if you ask me. But let's see. My mission is to make it fit. I can do it. Okay, I got this. I really don't know what this book is about. I just thought that it looked so cute. Like the drawings are so cute. <laughs> and you know, because I told you I was browsing in Carl's library and he had so many random books. So now I decided to buy random books. I already showed you these. I haven't finished it yet, to be honest. That's embarrassing. I have a journal. Guidebook to the unknown. Hey. <laughs> Jürgen, I forgot that I bought so many books. Oh no, how can you forget this? Oops. <laughs> I don't think we can fit them. Um, I think we can. We can make it work. Then I got this one. I actually bought a lot of German books. I mean, duh. But I think, again, Karl really inspired me because he had so many German books. Usually I try to go for English books because I know that when I read a book and I want to share it, the majority of my audience is non-German speaking. But I was so inspired that I bought this one. I never heard of it. And it's about big authors and their secrets. Ooh. So it's about Kafka, it's about Thomas Mann, it's about, ooh, Marcel Proust. Mm, so interesting. I'm excited to read this. Virginia Woolf. Oh my God, I love Virginia Woolf. Okay. Ah, this is the one I'm, I'm, I was talking about, about the maestro. It's 10 lessons of my life. This is actually a German book. Don't get tricked. And he talks about 10 encounters with people that changed his life. I love this, so good. And then this is a book. I think it's by an English, Sarah Bakewell. Doesn't sound German. Let's see. Yep, she is a British author. How to become human. <laughs> now you might be thinking, why do you need to know how to become a human? But it's about humanists. I hope that's the English word. So I'm very intrigued. I don't know, if you follow me, you see this like topic where I'm leaning in more into my human side and accept to be flawed. <laughs> because everybody's flawed. But because in the past, I never gave myself room to express the flaws because I'm always being watched. Like anywhere I go, anything I post and say, everything is always being watched. So I was always very scared in making a wrong move. So sometimes I would not make a move at all. I mean, this has probably nothing to do with this book, but I'm saying in general, that's also what I mentioned earlier. I'm so intrigued by other people's lives and their motivations in life and their jobs in life and I think it's so interesting especially in like the time of AI 
right? It's like everywhere around us. And I'm very interested in the human side of us. And I also learned to cut myself some slack, you know, allowing myself to be human. And anyway, that's just one of the topics I've been thinking about a lot. Oh my God, I forgot to show you. This is actually the book that I'm reading. It's by Jules Steingartner. And I really, really think like half of who I am is because of Jules Steingartner. I've been reading all his books when I was a very young child. I think I started reading Sophie's World when I was seven and I keep rereading it. I think I've read it like five times because every time you read it, it's a different book. And I actually read it the last time in 2020. And I feel like 2020 was four years ago already, okay? Let that sink in. But I feel like it wasn't that long ago. But now when I started reading this, I'm like, wow, I haven't read Sophie's Word in a while. And I'm sure, I'm one zillion, billion, trillion percent sure that I would see it so differently than I saw it in 2020. And one sec. Actually, you know what? I think I read all his books, literally all his books. So this is his latest book. And I haven't read it and I started reading it and I was thrown back into the world of Jules Steingartner and I love him. I love him. So, from Berlin to New York, real quick. Guys, it's summer. It's summer in the city. We're back at Washington Square. I think the last time we were here, it was December. I think it was cold. It was the day when we got the typewriter, right Jürgen? Yeah. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun. It's actually really hot, like I regret wearing denims. Whew. So what am I doing on this glorious day? So today we worked a bit, a lot. And then I, wait, what did I do? I ate last night's dinner, which I fully prepared myself because Jürgen was sick. Our little Jürgen boy got sick. And then working on my phone, like editing and stuff. And then we went to buy presents for Jürgen's brother because Jürgen's brother is currently at Harvard. Harvard. Herbert. He's doing um, research. Like, Jürgen, aren't you so proud of your brother? Yeah, I'm so proud. I think it's so major. I am proud of your brother. I think it's really, really major. So we wanted to buy like a gift, but I feel like it's really hard to choose a gift for a scientist. Guys, also he's doing research on like cancer cells right it makes me feel really bad about what i do like he's actually moving the world you know or he will be moving the world and i'm vlogging and watching square park <laughs> um yeah now we're here and i'm gonna go for a run oh that would be so cool if i go for a run here and then we have dinner with a friend so i think now it's time to show this piece of new york called the washington square park What I love about Washington Square Park is that it's so random, right? Huh? Do you want to give you a... Wait, 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 stay there. This is such a pretty frame. This is like a frame you look back in 20 years and you're like, oh my God, remember when I was young? Oh, look with the birds. <laughs> They're paid actors. We hired them all. Is it a pretty frame? I love this park. So what I was telling our friends is that everything here is so random, like in the best way. And I love randomness. Like I love people who are random. I love, I love it. I feel like when humans are being random, they're at their like most authentic self. Magic. We've got art. We've got skating. We've got more art. You can look, there's even clothing. We should put an entire stand here. Wouldn't that be funny? Wow, there's more art. This is really cool. Oh my God, this looks so cool. We've got tarot reading, music, music everywhere. If you want to get the sense of New York, you come here and you just sit down and you just spend hours here. Actually, I think it was in one of my older YouTube videos. Yes, I love that. It was in one of my older YouTube videos from like three years ago where I was at Washington Square Park and I was journaling here and the sun was setting. I feel like this is a particular nice place when the sun is setting because the atmosphere is just so magical. Fine. And Jürgen, remember when we saw a little Glühwürmchen? Was that here? Yeah, 
or was it somewhere else? It was here and it was in Thompson Square Park. The thing is, like in late summer or fall, I think it's late summer, you see a lot of these like lightning bugs. I don't know what you call them. And New York is full of them. Or maybe it was that summer when New York was full of it. But it's so nice. It's so magical. Like I've never really seen it in Germany. And here they're everywhere. Do they even exist in Germany? I think so. I'm not sure, maybe I made it up. Oh, I just love people watching. There's something about humans. Oh my God, we're back at the topic. Back at it. Okay guys, story time. Where do I begin? So one thing that I'm really, really grateful for is that I am healthy. I'm very grateful for that. And I'm very grateful that Jürgen is healthy again. Because you will not guess what happened. Jürgen, do you want to tell the story or should I tell the story? I can tell. Ooh, guys. So the night before yesterday, after we arrived, we ordered food from a place where we always order. I won't tell names now, but when I went to bed, I already had that weird feeling in my stomach. And guess what? I couldn't sleep the whole night because I spent it in the restroom puking. I had really bad, I think it's food poisoning, but like, uh, it was awful. No guys, I have emetophobia, okay? And it's my biggest nightmare, like just thinking about somebody puking. The last time I did it was 10 years ago. And before that I did it like twice in my life. Like, like I just can't and it freaked me out so much that Jürgen was sick that I had a panic attack. I had to lie down on the floor and like try to breathe but it was not a pleasant night and I'm very very grateful that Jürgen is feeling better and I realized I really need to get my emetophobia not under control because honestly when I talked about it therapy I was like I'm not okay like I cannot like, I, can, I literally cannot talk about it like I cannot talk about the feelings I'm feeling my fears I, I just cannot talk about it so I need to like do it later but it was so scary like even like you were just so sick it was awful and it reminds us back I always say a healthy man has a hundred wishes and a sick man has one wish right Jürgen yes but we're very gla glad that you're back to almost normal and now again back to the old topic from Berlin we're gonna take care of our good nutrition and then guys I need to tell you something really awful I'm really sorry about the bad news but again this is the good the bad and the ugly so I need to tell you something really really awful that happened it's unfortunately a very unpleasant story but the reason why I want to tell you this is for you guys to learn from my or our mistakes. So something really, really awful happened. And I think I can pinpoint it to the worst moment of my entire life. And it's really awful. Like I'm so uncomfortable talking about it, but I think it's important that I talk about it because maybe it will save somebody. Anyway, so as you know, I have a puppy and we were in Berlin on the weekend, as you know. And one evening we wanted to go somewhere and we went into an elevator where the elevator door closed really fast. Like it's one of these elevators where it's not like this, it's like this. And Jürgen and I, we both went in, but we were not being mindful, you know? And Rue was outside the elevator. We were inside with the leash and the door closed. And I like the moment we realized that the leash is inside, our dog is outside, the door is closing, the elevator went down. It was pure horror. Like I just screamed, no, 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 no. I, I pressed the emergency button, but it didn't make the elevator stop. It went down and I was screaming and I broke down because I literally thought we, we killed our dog. It was the worst moment of my entire life. In that moment, like my consciousness leaves. I only have my reptile brain functioning so i don't know I, I i don't know what's going on like i wa wanted to run up the stairs but Jürgen was like no go back up in the in the elevator and i went back up and rue was a few meters away from the elevator unbothered i don't know how it was possible but through some guardian angel miracle and like um 
I don't know, the grace of the universe. Nothing happened to her. And the leash, so the door was closed and it went down. So then it went through our door that was closed. It went up yeah. and then it went around the corner and through her, like the, the door. And like in my head, it makes zero sense how, how it could just go up. Also, I wanted to go to the vet because I was like, oh my God, I'm sure she got like dragged against the elevator when i saw her i just broke down and i was just like my heart was not okay like i just i had like a heart rate of i don't know 200 for like the next hours because i couldn't i couldn't come down i literally i couldn't stop crying i couldn't stop shaking and it was so awful and i think the scariest part is how quick your life can go from normal to just like your life is ruined there's nothing that scares me more than freak accidents and i also googled it and it's a thing like it happened to people who strangle their dogs in the elevator and it was like our fault because we were not being mindful yeah anyway i just i want to warn you or like make aware how important it is to be mindful it's not just some new age stuff it's actually like it can save lives i just have no words how awful it was every time i talk about it i'm in disbelief and i, I just remember that moment when the elevator went down and i was screaming no 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 and then i broke down and i screamed and and then i lost like my um, conscious self just pay attention with elevators especially I think what was really tricky about this one, well, it was definitely our fault because we weren't paying attention, but it was also a really fast one. Anyway, so what I wanted to tell you is that we asked them to check the security camera. We called a vet and we wanted to check if they were open because it was late. And the vet was like, so how is she behaving? Is she like acting weird? And she was just behaving normally. And we asked them to check the security footage, like where it happened. They checked the footage and she wasn't even dragged against the door like nothing literally nothing happened to her and i'm like a hundred times every single day i'm just like fucking thinking whoever protected me and her and us and i i honestly like like it was a moment you know this moment could have completely ruined my life i i honestly i would have never forgiven myself and it happened so fast it wasn't matter of seconds and that was really scary and please pay attention don't make the same mistake as we did and unfortunately i never heard of it before but when i googled it don't google it because it's fucking traumatizing it just happens so please pay attention when you go in the elevator with your dog wow that was really really uncomfortable we end the video on a sad note also with a happy ending with a happy ending and that's like i called my mom i just couldn't like stop shaking and crying and my mom was like okay first of all don't get into blaming mode and second of all like just be so grateful because everything turned out to be okay like just be so full in gratitude and because i always think about the moment when i thought something awful happened like i'm always thrown back to that and i really need to snap myself out of it and my mom was like focus on being grateful and like be so grateful and and that's really the big lesson here and i'm very 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 grateful and i'm so humbled i'm so humbled by life i think i mean and that's what my therapist said there's a lot of things that are out of our control and then i argue i'm like but this was in our control like it was us who weren't paying attention and it happened so fast and 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 it's so hard like so many things in life are just random and again i'm like so grateful that everything turned out okay but wow there was just after last year and like i i want to catch a break okay I'm, I'm very grateful and i want to catch a break no more panic attacks no more horrendous experiences i just focus on peace anyway i need to wrap up i'll see you next week in a hopefully better mood and more empowering stories bye